I'm gonna go ahead and apologize for the quality of this intro right now. I am editing videos and just noticed that I didn't film any sort of anything for my mini videos, so just for context, this is a side video if you would like to check out the original video, which is the main video of the entire costume. That link is going to be in the description. Uh, click that link, it'll take you to the main video. And then also in the description of the main video, it'll have the links for all the other videos, for all the other costume pieces. So if you want to go check those out, please do. I would really appreciate it. I hope you enjoy and I hope this gives you some sort of insight and maybe even some tips, maybe. Maybe tips of what not to do, but listen, it happens, okay? I do just want to have a super quick, super simple intro so that I don't take too much time away from the video, and also to avoid a double intro because all dogs probably came from the other one. So, yeah, enough rambling. Let's get on with the video. So, to start off with this, I did go ahead and freehand all the hexagons onto my shell. I don't recommend freehanding this, I would suggest trying to measure out the exact size of the hexagons that you want to use because this did come to bite me in the butt later on. As you can see, I've already kind of messed with the lines here, so I will have to go back later on and fix those. It's not the most difficult thing ever, but also it's a lot simpler to just follow a pattern. That way you can also maintain the same shape and same size and everything, and it just comes out a lot smoother. Once I was mostly happy with how that pattern turned out, I took my utility knife and as you can see here, I did start out by just kind of picking at the styrofoam to try and get as straight of a pattern as I could. Eventually I found out that it is a lot easier to go ahead and just cut the straight lines and basically trace the lines that you've drawn with your blade so that you can get a nice straight line. If your lines are not completely straight, it's okay because you will be sanding this later on anyway. I'll be honest, I don't know exactly the grit of the sandpaper that I used. Basically any sandpaper will work. I don't think it really matters that much. However, if you do have a better idea of what grit might work better, I am open for suggestions. I am just doing this for the first time after all, so whatever tips you got, I will happily accept them. And again, right here you can see that I definitely did not stick with the original pattern that I drew. It doesn't matter, you can change it, but once you cut, that is kind of your final cut. So you're stuck with whatever it is that you cut out. However, if you need to change anything up when you're drawing, no big deal. Just redraw the lines, darken them up, whatever you gotta do to set them apart. To start the long, horrific process of me setting this actual thing, I took some wood glue on a sponge brush and basically just brushed it over the entire shell, waited for that to dry, and then did it a couple more times. I think I ended up with three or four coats of wood glue just to make sure everything was really nicely sealed and I had a perfectly smooth surface to work with. Why did I think I needed so much footage of me setting this? I have no idea, but if you've got any questions, there is plenty of footage of it. This is where things get a little more tricky and a lot more messy. Basically what I did was I just drew an outline of the size of the shell onto a piece of styrofoam 
and then removed the shell and made a bigger outline that was going to be the border for the shell. I then took my utility knife and cut out the outer circle and then the inner circle. As you can see, there is not a full circle here. I did end up having to use two opposite sides of this block of styrofoam because one, it was too thick and two, I did not measure correctly. I did just eyeball this styrofoam when I was buying it so it's not the right size so I did have to kind of wing it a little bit. I just flipped it over, used the other side, and then used wood glue to connect everything later on. As you can see here, I did figure out that you can just break things off once you get a certain way through the styrofoam. You don't have to cut all the way through and you can still get a pretty clean break. These are kind of going to leave a little bit of harsh corners, but you can very easily sand these out. I didn't even set these yet and it sanded out really easily. So instead of sawing all the way through the styrofoam with a utility knife, I just saw it about halfway, maybe three quarters of the way, and then snapped it off, and it was a very clean break, very smooth break, and I think I did have one edge that was a little bit more rounded, but the shell ends up getting rounded off anyway, so it didn't matter that much. At this point, the wood glue on the main part of the shell was dry and my ADHD kicked in, so I switched gears and started painting it. The base, I just painted green with a green acrylic paint. Again, please make sure that the wood glue is completely dry. It'll have a little bit of a yellow sheen to it, so that'll kind of let you know. And then also, if you tap it, you know, it's dry. So make sure that it is completely dry because you can potentially ruin the paint and your brushes and everything else and it may not seem like a big deal to anybody else but to me that is like the end of the world so please be careful also the sharpie did take a couple of coats to cover I think I ended up putting three coats of green paint and then also had to go back and touch up because I was not very careful with my paintbrush when I was painting the other details of the shell. So it did end up with three coats of paint total and then of course a little bit of touching up. I don't know if it was one of the clips that got deleted or if I actually just didn't get footage of it, but I did just attach the border of the shell with wood glue. I attached all the pieces individually. I did have a couple of openings that I did not like. So I went back and covered it with fabric and I mentioned in the main video that I was going to do a little bit better of smoothing that out but I kind of liked the texture of it. I don't know why but I did. So I just went ahead and left it. Of course you don't have to do this if you measure everything properly. You won't have to worry about adding any fabric at all. You can just cut it out all in one solid piece and glue it onto the shell and then just put your wood glue to seal it or Mod Podge or Plasti Dip, whatever you're using and then just paint over that and it will create a smooth, seamless surface. Again, once wood glue dries, it does kind of leave a little bit of a yellow sheen to it and that was visible through the white fabric. So I did go ahead and go back and paint the entire border of the shell white. Also, like I said, I was not super careful with painting, so I did get green all over the white and orange all over the green and all kinds of stuff was going on, so I did have to go back and repaint certain areas, but they needed a couple of extra coats in certain areas anyway, so it wasn't that big of a deal. I did go back and paint some of the cutout pieces green, Basically just so that if I did decide to leave a little bit more of the green on the edges I did have that option as opposed to having to paint the entire thing black But I did end up just going and painting the entire bit of the cutout pieces black I felt like it made a nice contrast and it really made the hexagons pop and gave it more of a little bit of What's the word for it? Dimension. That's the word I'm looking for. It gave it a little bit more dimension. 
Again, the black lines from the Sharpie did take a couple of coats of green to completely cover, but as you can see, some of the black did come out up over the edge, so I needed to go back and touch up the green anyway. So I wasn't super careful with how I painted this because, you know, I went back and fine-tuned later on. I'm not going to go too into detail about how I made the spikes. Basically, just take some foam clay, pull it into balls, and flatten out the bottom and create the spike. If you need it to be a little bit more pointed, just go ahead and sand or to whatever you got to do. I then sealed these with wood glue and then painted them white after I glued them on.
Do you see that brown bottle that I just reached for? Yeah, that's contact cement, aka a mistake. If you put this on styrofoam, it will eat through the styrofoam. Let me repeat. If you put contact, what am I doing? What is what is going on here? Okay. Anyway, if you put contact cement on styrofoam, it will eat through it. It will not stick. It is not a good idea, and your life will suck afterwards because I did have to go on and rip all of these off and let the eaten off styrofoam question mark either way i had to let that dry reseal it with wood glue and paint it and all that fun stuff and then go back and hot glue the spikes on if you want to contact cement the rings on to the spikes that's fine do not for the love of god contact cement the spikes to the ship oh sweet naivety if only she knew what I know. That was painful enough to experience the first time around, so we're just gonna move right along and pretend it never happened. To make the rings, I started out by taking a bit of foam clay, which, fun fact, is called C4 from the place that I get it, which is called TNT Cosplay. Hilarious. And I basically measured it out, connected the ends, attached it with, you guessed it, cement. Again, do not apply this to the styrofoam. What I'm doing right here is dumb and does not work and will make your life suck. Do not do this. If you would like to apply the contact cement to the spikes, that's one thing. Do not apply it to the styrofoam. I don't know how many times I can say it and reiterate it. It is a bad idea. Do not do it. Use hot glue instead, and then I painted them orange. That is clearly not orange paint, and no, I'm not colorblind. What I did here was I did fill three wells, one with orange, one with white, and one with black, and then I added more green paint because, as you remember, I did say I did three different coats. This was over the process of the entire making of the shell. The original coat is the only one that actually covered the entirety of the shell. As it turns out, my rule of thumb is I usually paint about three coats. So the orange, the white that I painted on the spikes and the border, as well as the green base and the black detailing all got three coats each. Assuming you came from the main video, you already know that I am a jackass and accidentally deleted some of my footage. This is what I have to show you. I'm just going to talk you through the rest of it because it's pretty simple to gather, I believe. Basically what I did was I just took some clear bra straps that I got from Walmart and I hot glued them to the inside of the border of the shell. If this is at all confusing, which it probably is because I'm not good at explaining things without visuals, I did point them out in the main video. So if you, again, want to go check that out, the link is in the description box. Again, I severely apologize for messing up my footage. I tried to find it, but it was nowhere to be found. It was completely deleted from my hard drive. So if you're at all confused, please leave a comment, let me know, and I will try to grab my shell and record it and show you a little bit better with some sort of visual what I did, where I placed the straps, but again, it is in that main video. Thank you again for understanding and being patient with me, and thank you so much for watching, and be sure to check out the other videos in this series.